Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to another episode of Parasitology series. Today we'll be discussing Trypanosoma cruzi or Trypanosoma cruzi. There are two pronunciations for this word so you can go with the one you like. But before getting into the lecture, I would like to tell you that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things may change with time, treatments may change. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is welcomed in the comment section. Let's get started. Trypanosoma. It is a genus. It has three main pathogens. The first one is Trypanosoma cruzi, then Trypanosoma gambiense, then Trypanosoma rhodesiense. But in this lecture, I'll talk about Trypanosoma cruzi, and the remaining two will be discussed in the next lecture. So, uh, the lecture outline is here. In this lecture, we'll be talking about the introduction of Trypanosoma cruzi, its habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and finally, the prevention. Trypanosoma cruzi, a species of parasitic euglenoids. And this parasite is responsible for causing Chag's disease or Shag's disease. There are two pronunciations for the name of this disease. You can go with the one you like. I would like to call it Chag's disease. Here in the diagram, along with human cells, you can see the parasite. Habitate. I've talked about habitat in detail in my parasitology video. Its link is in the description. Do check that out, guys. Humans and animals, mainly the mammals, like domestic cats, dogs, and wild species like armadillo, raccoon, and rat. These are the hosts and reservoirs for this Trypanosoma cruzi. On the left side, you can see a bug. This is reduvid bug and when it bites a human it is responsible for transmitting the trypanosoma cruzi into the human body which is responsible for causing Chag's disease so the transmission of this trypanosoma cruzi occurs via the bite of reduvid bug triatoma cone nose or kissing bug there's a reason why it is called kissing bug. I'll discuss this a bit later. It can also be transferred from mother to the fetus through the placenta. And this sort of transmission or transfer is called transplacental transmission. And also during the blood transfusions. If one person has infected blood or the person has antibodies against this trypanosoma or trypanosoma cruzi that we if we transfer transfer that blood to another person another person would definitely get that disease chag's disease so blood transfusions also play a role in the transmission of this parasite life cycle the cycle in the reduvid bug begins with the ingestion of trypomastigotes from the blood of the reservoir host. The picture on the right side is showing the trypomastigoid of the trypanosoma cruzi. After the ingestion, in the insect gut, the trypomastigoids multiply and differentiate first into epimastigotes and then into trypomastigotes. Here in the diagram, you can see the apimastigot. When the bug bites again, the site is contaminated with the feces of bug containing trypomastigotes, which enter the blood of the person or other reservoirs, including the mammals, and form non-flagellated amastigotes within the host cells. In the diagram, you can see this amastigote, which is non-flagellated. Many cells can be affected, but the myocardial, glial, reticuloendothelial cells are most frequent sites. 
To complete the life cycle, amastic goats differentiate into tripomastic goats, which enter the blood and are taken up by redoweed bugs. The left side, uh, the step number one shows that the bug, redoweed bug, ingests the trypomastic goats into the host, the human being. In the step two on the right top side, the trypomastic goats are transformed into amastic goats. The amastic goats multiplied by binary fission in cells and infected tissues. The amastic goats then again transform into trypomastic goats and the trypomastic goats uh, trans. Uh, form into amastigotes. The cycle uh, goes on, but some of the amastigotes are ingested by the bug when the bug bites again. Then the amastigotes, the, sorry, the trypomastigotes in the gut of the bug are converted into apimastigotes which multiply in midgut and then are converted into trypomastigotes in the hindgut of that bug which are again ingested by the bug into the host with the bite. And the cycle is repeated all over again. Epidemiology. Chag's disease occurs primarily in rural areas because the redo weed bug lives in walls of rural huts and feeds at night. It bites preferentially around the mouth or eyes, hence it is named kissing bug. Pathogenesis. The amastigotes can kill and cause inflammation consisting mainly of mononuclear cells. Cardiac muscle is the most frequently it's severely affected tissue. In addition, neuronal damage leads to cardiac arrhythmias and loss of tone in colon, leading to megacolon leading to and mega esophagus. During the acute phase, there are both trypomastigotes in the blood and amastigotes intracellularly in tissues. In the coronic phase, the organism persists in the amastigot form. Clinical findings. Acute phase has facial edema, nodule near the bite, fever, lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly, Romana's sign, unilateral palpebral swelling around the eye due to the bite, this is called Romana's sign. In the picture, you can see the swelling. And the acute infection normally ends within two months. Sometimes the infection may be asymptomatic or sometimes the acute infection progresses to chronic form and the chronic form is present with myocarditis, megacolon and that can occur due to cardiac arrhythmias or congestive heart failure. Lab diagnosis. We will need specimens like blood, bone marrow aspirate or muscle biopsy. Then we will go for microscopy to look for the trypomastigoids, amastigoids and then culture, it will grow the organism, then xenodiagnosis, serologic tests, those are for antibodies, treatment, nifrutimox for acute disease. It kills trypomastigotes in blood and it is less effective against amastigotes. Alternative is benzenidazole. There is no effective drug against chronic disease, chronic Chag's disease. Prevention. Protection from the reduvid bug. Improved housing because the reduvid bug mainly lives in the walls of huts. Blood transfusions should be tested for antibodies of trypanosoma cruzi. No prophylactic drug or vaccine is available. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. Give this video a big thumbs up. Leave the suggestions in the comments below that what topics you guys want me to cover after the completion of this parasitology series. Till next time, Allah Hafiz.